Hey all. Hello Nuggets. Okay, so this is going to be a tough one. So I'm going to smoke during this. I'm going to vape during this. Yes, I heard the reports about vaping. Um, so I was going to retell the story of the day I took my mother to the home, the Alzheimer's home. Uh, the lockdown facility. Is there a better name for it? I don't know what else. It's a locked door facility. They can't get out. So I guess that's what it's called. But the day I took her, um, just in case anyone finds this blog and they are getting close to that point, you can know what I went through. And uh, I want pony punches about how hard it was. So we had to plan the day, firstly. Um, you know, it took my stepfather... It was such a hard thing for him to choose to do because I've mentioned before, I think, the guilt and just the the stress and duress. But the truth was uh, it, it had to happen because he was dying. I mean, it was just like, you know, and he's younger. He's a lot younger than my mother. So he was just getting lost uh, as a caregiver. He committed to it and he mentioned till death to us part many times and how he felt that it was his job to, to be there for. Him. And of course it was. But there's also a point where he just cannot do it anymore, you know, and just having someone in the house wasn't enough because my mum's Alzheimer's changed her dramatically. It wasn't, you know, I've been to the home and there's there's lots of, it takes many different forms with people and some of them are kind of happy. They're all forgetful when they all ask the same questions over and over again, but some of them are pretty happy and upbeat. That was not my mother. My mother was raging and crying and throwing fists and like it was it was the worst end of it it was a very dark situation so she had to go to a home we couldn't just have a home caregiver and it was destroying my stepfather so we talked about taking her to the home a lot until fred eventually said i gotta do it i can't do it anymore she's got to go to the home and we decided that i would take her to the home because uh, i think that would have broken fred completely uh, my stepfather completely um so we decided I was feeling very emotionally strong at the time. I was like, yeah, I'll take her. It's okay. You know, I was I, I was in a bit of a let's get on with it kind of mood phase in my life. You know, it was like we just got to rip the band-aid off kind of feeling. So I decided to take her. So we were well into our routine at this point with my mother where I would go pick her up on a Sunday. We'd go to IHOP to have breakfast and then we would go to church and then we would go to a spiritual garden or somewhere else. I would find all the museum, art gallery, stuff like that. I would take her to places. The Getty, we went to the Getty quite a lot. She loved the Getty. Um, so, and she was always ready when I got there. She would wear her little trench coat. I have this beautiful picture of her. She'd wear a hat and her little trench coat and she'd be standing at the door looking forward to seeing me as it progressed she was less she didn't have a smile on her face anymore she was just like she was like I know my son's coming that's the one thing I can remember um, but she still looked terribly stressed out but we were well into that routine at that point so we decided what would happen is I would pick her up on it was either a Thursday or a Friday something like that now actually no actually I think it was earlier in the week so that all the regular staff were on in the home It was probably a Tuesday um, that I would come pick her up and I would drive her to the home and check her in. And this is where Alzheimer's is so interesting. When I turned up at the door on that day, my mum knew. She couldn't say it and she couldn't express it, but she knew something was up. She'd been, Fred was, you know, my stepfather, had, I assume, been sending out subconscious signals all morning about his trauma, about, oh my God, what are we doing? And my mum could feel it. Because when I got to the door, she's like, what's going on? Where are we going? What's going on? Where are we going? Just going out. Where? And she never asked me that. She was always like, let's go wherever we're going. You know, I mean, or, or she just, she trusted me. She grabbed my hand. She put her arm in mine. And like I was a security blanket, you know, um, in the chaos that she was going through. But this time she felt something was different. So immediately when I got there, I'm starting to feel guilty. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be a rough one. So we drive to the home, which is not that far. It's, you know, we, uh, my stepfather put her in a home that was very close. We put her in a home that was very close to Fred so we could visit her and stuff. So I drive her there and it's got an underground parking lot. It's actually the Belmont Village in, in Hollywood, if anyone's wondering. 
Um, so we drive into the underground parking lot and my mother's, it instantly goes dark. Here's the thing. It's also a dark parking lot. So I can see in my mum's confused state how we're going from this sunny day where she thinks something is going and then suddenly into this dark hole. And then I pull up and stop. And she's like, what are we doing here? I don't want to get out. I don't want to get out. And I'm like, we're just going to go see some people. I don't want to get out. I don't want to get out. It's come on, mum. We got to go now. We got to go. No. And that went on for quite a while. We're sitting in the parking lot, you know, and she wouldn't get out of the car. So eventually she did and she'd get out and then she would walk towards the elevator and stop. Why are we here? Why are we here? We're just going to go see some people. Why are we here? We're just going to go see some people. The same thing over and over again. It must have taken 15 minutes, maybe even longer, to be honest with you, just to get her from the car to the front, to the lobby. So we get to the lobby. I can't remember if they knew we were coming. I think Fred had called them. My stepfather recalled them and told them we were on our way. And then they were probably sitting in the lobby going, where the hell are they? That was an hour ago and they're still not here, you know. But eventually... We get upstairs, she's walking around, she's like, I don't want to be here, I don't want to be here. Are, are you putting me here? Is this where you're putting me? Are you putting me here? Because we had to walk through the home, and the first part of the, the, the residency is all voluntary. It's all just people, you know, living there for caregiving. And it's nice, and people are okay. I mean, as happy as you can be expected to be, you know. It's not the most beautiful place, but, you know, it's in the middle of a city. What are you going to do? It's not going to have these beautiful rolling vineyards out back. Um, but people are okay, but we have to walk all the way through those bits and then go through the locked door. So we go through the locked door and she's just like, she's stopping all the time. And then she doesn't want to go through the locked door. She's like, I'm not, no, no, no. What are we doing? I don't, I want to go home. I want to go home. Eventually managed to coax her through. And I have, at this point we have some caregivers there as well. And the, um, the, the person who oversees it, I can't remember what they call the person who oversees the care, the Alzheimer's specialist or whatever is there as well and we get her eventually she goes through the door and then we walk her to her room we happen to pick the room that was the furthest one away which now doesn't matter and she's in a different room now actually but it, it didn't seem like it was even remotely an important decision but actually the walk from the door to the room was awful because it was such a long walk and kept stopping and not wanting to go to the point where, you know, you can't grab her. I couldn't grab her and pull her down the corridor. But where me and the caregivers are standing down in the door with the door open and she's at the far end of the corridor just like looking. And then eventually she would, just wouldn't move. She wouldn't move. So I walk down towards her and she starts walking towards doors and trying to open doors. She's trying to open doors to get out, right? And I'm just, I'm trying to hold her hand and she's snatching her hand away from me, which she never did before. I was always her rock, you know. I was her son. She loved me. Um, and so eventually I sit her down and she's just like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? I'm like, I'm sorry, mum. It's just like, you need to stay here for a while. These people can help you. And you know, I know I'm lying. She knows I'm lying. She just doesn't have the tools to express it, which made it even more torturous, I would imagine for her. Because somewhere in her head, she, she can, she comprehends what's going on, but has no way of telling you. I mean, awful, awful situation. So I sit down, I hold her hand, I stroke her hand, she's pulling it away. And then eventually somehow I get her to walk towards the room. I said, mum, we got to get this over with, you got to come with me. So eventually she walks down, we go into the room and there's two caregivers there and the specialist, like the, the, the forewoman, I guess you would call her. What the fuck, why am I blanking on that? The specialist who's basically in charge of all of the, the floor of the Alzheimer's division, as it were. Um, there it, she's in the room as well. And Fred has spent a lot of money on the room, right? So she's got a new bed, she's got a new television. With the family, myself and Laura and other people, we've put pictures up all over the walls. We've tried to make it as nice as we can and as memorable as we can like these are all things that are within your life you know we chose the brightest room but Fred got the most expensive room um we did everything that we could which is bloody expensive by the way oh my god those places are expensive uh I might do a post on that some other time so we do everything we can to make it better but it's all irrelevant she doesn't see any of that what she sees 
is as she walks into the room, I think she understood this is now my prison. You just brought me to my prison. And she fucking rages hard. She starts screaming at me. And I've never really told anyone exactly what she said, but she started screaming at me. I hate you. You're not my son. How could you do this? Shame on you. Shame on you. Very eloquent. Very eloquent for someone, you know, going through what she was going and looking at me just wanting to spit and scratch my eyes out. I hate you. You're not my son. How could you do this to me? What kind of son does this to their mother? And um, that went on for a few minutes and me, I was just sitting on the bed and said, I'm so sorry, mum, but this is for the best. This is for the best. And I'm actually pretty strong through it. It's afterwards that it got more harder when I reflected on it. During it, I'm actually pretty strong and I know it's not her. I know it's the disease. So none of it is hurting me. I know it's not her hurting me. It's the situation hurting me. And I'm very aware of that at the time. Um, until eventually the, the caregivers are like, you, you, you need to go. <laughs> you need to go. And I'm like, what do I just walk out of this room? Is that what I do now? I, do I turn my back on the woman who brought me up, who raised me, that I love so much, and just walk out? Because we knew that once we dropped her there, we wouldn't be able to see her for at least two weeks. They recommended it takes a long time for them to adjust. And some people are fine, some people aren't. But until she forgets where she is and we've fixed her medication, God, it all sounds so dark, doesn't it? So underhand and menacing. But until she's forgotten and they've kind of, she's established where she is, we shouldn't go see her. In the end, that took, I think, three or four weeks. It took a, quite a while. But I knew when I, if, when I turned and walked out, I'm like, so this is it. I just walk away from my mother now. That's it. We're done. And that's what I did. That's what I had to do. With her screaming at me and shouting and, and, and pushing people away. And at some point during her raging with me, when they're like, you should go. They're like, you should probably leave. It's probably time. And I'm like, that's it. I just go. My mother stopped looking at me and started looking at the caregivers I don't know if she's ever really looked at me again. I mean, she has. But it felt like at that moment, it was the last time she looked at her son. She disowned me. And again, I know she didn't. I'm fully aware of that. I know the disease did. But I transitioned into the enemy there. And because she then went into a steep decline... I lost her memory, adjusted her medication to try and stop her raging a little bit because she was losing it. I never saw her again in a mode where she recognized me instantly as the son. So I never got the, the, the cute five foot two woman in the trench coat and the hat going, where are we going today? I never got that again. I never even got the fearful one when I opened the door and she'd look at me like this and just grab my arm and go, hello. Just like desperately happy to see her rock, you know. A son that she could always rely on. At that moment, while I'm having the conversation with the caregivers and they're telling me she, that we should go, she looks at me and as she turns away, that's it. Never saw her again. Ah, oh, awful. Um, so after that, again, it was about three or four weeks before we'd go visit her. Fred was broken, obviously. I was pretty good about it. I went to see him afterwards. I was like, it's okay. It's okay, you know. It was, it was kind of tough, but it was okay. I don't know if I've ever shared how hard it was. And I don't know if I've even shared on this how hard it is, because I don't know if I could handle it if I did. But just having your mother scream at you and disown you, you know, I mean, we see it in movies, right? And we know that there are bad families and dysfunctional families to do it all the time. But ours was functional, you know. I had a wonderful re relationship with my mother. And it broke in the worst possible. Why you do this to me, Demi? We watched The Exorcist again the other night. But it was a bit, why you do this to me, Demi? Um, all right, that's it. If I think of any... What did I say? I mentioned something in this blog where I was going to do... Oh, yeah, the cost. Yeah, I'm going to have a think about that. And I'll do it by a post about the cost of caregiving for Alzheimer's. Because you might want to think about that. Not just for your parents, but for you. At the future, if you have to go through something like this... You need to add the money to do it, and it costs a lot. So I might do a blog on that once I thought it out properly. All right, little nuggets. Have a good day. Bye.
hope this isn't this probably isn't a lunchtime video all right bye